Beach Marine here, the Cape Cod Bay uh, lobe, went through this area and overtook the Buzzards Bay lobe. And we're looking down at the river valley where the Cape Cod Canal eventually was built. Um, by the 1860s, this area was all cranberry bogs and uh, farmland here in between these two high hills that are about 200 feet. And so it was a perfect area for a canal to be built. The Native Americans would have come down from Great Herring Pond down the Herring River and they would have paddled along the Herring River to get over to Uptuxet Trading Post, which was one of the first tourist traps in the area. The Hudson Bay Company had built that and they made a lot of money trading with the native peoples and also with the um, Europeans that were coming and moving into the area. 1697, the area was surveyed and it was claimed to be a great area for a canal. But um, the 1697 survey didn't take into account the glacial history. No one even thought about that. So when 200 years later, a canal was being built, they kept coming upon huge rocks, huge erratics, the size of houses. So we're right along the scenic highway, so we're going to hear a lot of traffic going by, and I apologize for that. Um, I want us to look down at the canal, and we're looking over at the Sagamore Bridge. And so right where the Sagamore Bridge is, maybe even a little bit um, further to the east, would have been where the Scusset River headwaters flowed out from groundwater. And so where the curve is here of the canal, this is where the bridge would have gone across on along uh, the Cape Cod side and so this was about a 30 foot rise that they um, had to get rid of in order to connect the waters from the two rivers and so the Herring River is here the Scusset River would have flowed out to Cape Cod Bay and the Herring River flowed out to what became after the glacier left Buzzards Bay 